Hello everyone, welcome back. So we're continuing with Hauntober and it's our only ghost story for this Hauntober and that is Somebody's Darling. I'm trying to make sure I don't get the glare too much on, there we go. Somebody's Darling by Linda Fosnett. Now that cover is the Amazon cover for Kindle. Um, I don't really like to promote Amazon. They're just so big. They have so much promotion already. Everybody goes there already. I'd rather promote like half price books or Barnes and Nobles, places that aren't like the, the forethought of everybody's brain personally. However, uh, I will have the cover for the Barnes and Noble edition on the thumbnail. I'm not going to lie. I didn't like that cover as much as I liked the Kindle um, cover. It was an okay cover. However, there's one thing that's glaringly obvious, which is that they photoshopped a hat over the soldier's head. It's, like I said, it's a completely different cover. It's fairly well done, except for the hat. It just doesn't work. It just looks like they looked at the picture and they're like, oh, he's supposed to have a hat. And like stamped a picture of a hat on it, essentially, is how it looks. Not a huge issue. I mean, let's face it, once you've passed the cover, you're not going to look at it again. So not a big deal. Anywho, let's move on with the actual story. So this is part of the, I believe it's called the Gettysburg Ghost series or Ghosts of Gettysburg, something along that lines. And at first I thought this was going to be a love triangle, but it actually was not, which was something of a pleasant surprise. And aside from graphic remembrances from the war, there really aren't a whole lot of trigger warnings. There are trigger warnings because of remembrances of the war. They both remember how they died. They, they actually actively talk about how they died. And at one point there is a full on um, flashback scene, but it's in a kind of a roundabout way. So it is in there. I don't know if I'll get to it in the review because I don't want to give away too much, but I might because it is kind of an important thing to keep in mind before you get it, if you decide you want to read the story. So we have four main character. There is a supporting character and I'm not going to lie. I forgot her name. I think it's Teresa, but I could be wrong. But the four main characters are Jesse Spencer, who is a Confederate officer from Texas, Mama Phyllis, who is the soul of a former slave who had died a few months before Gettys the, the Battle of Gettysburg, Joel Casey, who is a Union soldier, and uh, Lucy Westbrook, who is a girl who works at one of the restaurants in Gettysburg, working her way through college. So <clears throat> we start off with Jesse and Mama Phyllis in kind of like Town Square of Gettysburg. It is not uncommon for like reenactors to wander through town and act like they are soldiers and things apparently. I've never been there, so I'm going based off of the story, which is very well, so, uh, very well researched, by the way, for all the history buffs out there. Um, so apparently ghosts can actually manifest themselves in a solid form to a person they still can't touch them but they can look solid so that they can actually have a conversation with you and you won't get all freaked out about the fact that you're talking to a ghost <laughs> um or they can be completely invisible to the living however even if they're completely invisible to the living they can still be seen by other ghosts they just look transparent so it kind of works out because then if there's like somebody that you know and you want to say hi to them but you're in solid form and you see that they're not then you know not to say anything because if people just think you're crazy but um so there's that and then you also find out that the soldiers have really kind of learned to get along with each other you figure they've been ghosts in gettysburg for the last 150 plus years you're gonna learn to get along you're gonna learn to get past your issues with each other no matter which side of the war you had been on which is kind of cool. Uh, and the other thing is they can't leave Gettysburg or the battlegrounds. Those are kind of their border, so to speak. If they try to pass the line out of Gettysburg, they just kind of disappear and end up coming back to Gettysburg. So not long after we have the inner musings from Jesse's mind, which is what brings us all this wonderful knowledge, um, Joel comes down the street and immediately there is a very clear 
very um, strong animosity between the two. It goes beyond, um, obviously, the war because all the other soldiers have essentially learned to get along, so it's personal. And they end up getting into a bit of a verbal, you know, a verbal disagreement. And it ends up with them make, making a wager that uh, each of them thinks that they could choose some random chick off of the street. And by talking to her and flirting with her a little bit, that they could basically get her to agree that she would pick him over the other. So they develop an interesting way of tossing a coin for, you know, deciding who's going to go first because they can't actually touch the coin. So they're wandering up and down the street looking for a coin. <laughs> and basically before they go to look for this coin, they decide, well, I'll be heads, you'll be tails. And with the first one we find, that's what it is. So Jesse ends up choosing, and he chooses Lucy Westbrook. Um, Joel does not know this, but Jesse actually has feelings for Lucy. He'd happened to uh, come across her one day and when he was uh, in the restaurant that she works at, uh, he likes to watch children because, you know, children are usually sweet and innocent like the younger they are. And he'd always wanted to be a father, but he never got the chance to. And uh, so he went into the restaurant one day where there were some kids and he happened to see her and liked how she interacted with children. And so he started kind of watching her in the restaurant uh, when he was in invisible form and you get the impression he's done this for like months and he's essentially fallen in love with her even though he's never really spoken to her so in his mind he he has a reason and a chance to speak to her and um, so he's very nervous about it and then he starts worrying well what if she picks Joel over me I'd never be able to come back and look at her again you know, my heart would be broken kind of a deal. So they come up to her and they start chatting with her and flirting with her. And she's such a sweethearted girl. She's very shy. She's very timid. She doesn't like to hurt anybody. So, of course, she says, you know, I can't choose. And they said, well, you know, we can come back tomorrow. You can get to know us and eventually make a decision, right? And so they start to develop a friendship of sorts. And by friendship, I mean the two of guys develop a friendship with Lucy. They still can't stand each other. Um, and at one point, Jesse makes a comment and it's like a joke. And she, Lucy goes to like playfully swat his shoulder and her hand goes right through his shoulder. And understandably, she freaks out. And the guys initially decide to stay away from her. They don't want to freak her out anymore. They don't want to make her life any more difficult. She's very scared of ghosts. She's very sensitive to the paranormal, apparently. And eventually, she kind of comes to terms with things and she realizes they're still the guys I was friends with. They're just not living anymore. And so she decides she wants to help them to cross over. Enter Mama Phyllis. Uh, as I said, Mama Phyllis had been a slave. She'd been a house slave. She had been um, partially in charge of raising the master's three children. So she has a very motherly type instinct. And she's basically taken on the mother role for any ghost in Gettysburg. Not even ones related to um, the actual battle of Gettysburg. You know, just anyone who is there who maybe needs some sort of guidance. She's there for them. And so... Through talking to the guys, she knows that Mama Phyllis will sometimes hang out in the square and she goes and finds her and they gang up on the guys and they say, hey, you got to deal with your stuff so you can cross over. And so Lucy ends up taking them to Devil's Den where there had been a battle, uh, part of Gettysburg, part of the, the bigger Gettysburg battle. And this is where we find out why the guys don't like each other. They battled each other in Devil's Den. And one killed the other before they themselves died. And the other killed the other one's friend. And so there is a very personal animosity between the two. Understandably so. Um, so throughout the course of the story, Jesse and Lucy 
admit their feelings for each other. They've both, they've both fallen for each other. They know that they can't actually be together because one, one of them is a ghost. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I was kind of like, um, I don't see how there's going to be any sort of happy ending here because, um, they, you know, it's, it is not like a typical ghost story where there's like witches and vampires and werewolves all over the place. It's not like a paranormal world. It's the real world with ghosts in it. <clears throat> and then we're starting to go through, you know, a series of events. And I was like, well, you know, maybe there's descendants of one of them. And after they cross over, she falls for them or something. No, that is so not what happens. Um, first off, about 75% in, the author goes into a bit of a political rant, so to speak, and it just didn't match with the rest of the story. It didn't go. It didn't, the rest of the story flows together very, very nicely and is very cohesive. It's very understandable. And then big old chunk of political stuff. No apparent reason. Well, there is a reason. It just doesn't match though. It's like if you had a picture and it was all nice and pretty and then like watermark down this one section. It's distracting, but it doesn't completely diminish the appearance of the picture. I have no idea if that's a good analogy. Sorry. But so aside from that, um, in this story, there's confirmation that there is a heaven and there is a God. And we're just going to say that that plays into the happy ending because I don't want to give it away because it would defeat the purpose of giving you this review. Although to be honest, the next review is going to be a spoiler review, but for very specific reasons. So characters, you really didn't get a whole lot of character development with Lucy. Um, the only thing you really get about Lucy is that she's a very good, sweet, good, sweet natured girl, stereotypical good girl type, you know? Um, but then again, the story isn't really about Lucy. Uh, it's one of the few stories where the storyline is more, uh, based around the guy and it's based around Jesse and Joel because you did find out earlier in the story that Joel had been married and had kids. So this whole time that he is a ghost, he's been away from his wife and kids. And he wants to get home to her. Home being heaven. And Jesse was never married. However, he had tremendous guilt over leaving his parents because he'd been an only child. And his father had been a little bit older, so he kind of worried that they wouldn't be able to do all of the work from the farm. Although he knew that his cousins would help out, and apparently he had a lot of cousins. So, it's a love story between Jesse and Lucy, yes. But it's also a forgiveness story between Jesse and Joel. And it's also Joel forgiving himself for an indiscretion he had had. Um, so that he can go back to his wife, Emma. And... So there is character development and it's, again, I would feel upset about the lack of character development for Lucy, except it was pretty clear she was not one of the main protagonists. It's a romance between a guy and a chick, but the chick isn't one of the major characters. She wasn't meant, well, she is a major character, but she isn't one of the two leading characters. The two leading characters are Jesse and Joel. And you could argue that she's a third leading character, but because of the fact that it's based around them coming to terms with how they died and everything, they are the two real leading characters. So it's a good story. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was very good. Um, you get about halfway through the story and you're like, oh, wow, this is a really nice, sweet romance. It's very sweet natured. Jesse's like, you know, the good old country boy. He thinks that the sun and the stars, Lucy hangs them every day. You know, she can do no wrong. Utterly devoted to her. 
which is very sweet. I was at a point where I was like, cool, this is a story that I can maybe recommend to some of my friends and family who are a little bit more conservative. I have uh, a couple of family members who are evangelical and are a little bit more strict about what they do or don't read um, or watch. And I was like, okay, there's not a whole lot of bad language in here. There's a little bit, I mean, but it's not terrible. I mean, they're, they're both old timey guys. They don't like to use bad language in front of women. Um, there hadn't been any super explicit sexuality or gruesomeness. However, um, when you get to the part where they're going back to Devil's Den, there is a huge, huge focus on Jesse's death to the point where one of them relives it. And it describes the pain he went through. And it was some massive pain. It was a very gruesome death. So if that is something that would be a trigger for you, do not consider reading this story. And then at one point there is a, an intimate scene. And um, yeah, so I was like, well, I won't be able to recommend that one. <laughs> but you know, it's still a good story. It's very well written, it's well researched. And like I said, with the exception of that little political rant that got put in there about 75% in, the, it flows really well. I think most people would enjoy it. Um, the intimate scene is not so important to the story that you have to read it. You can, you can skip by it and it would be a problem. The only thing that is kind of important to the story that could be a problem would be the part where introduced to Jesse's death, basically, because that is intense and it's very rough to read. And you're like, oh my gosh. But you know, if that's not an issue for you or it's something you can you can handle pretty well, then I would definitely recommend this uh, story. I think I gave it like a 3.5 or 3.6 stars. Um, I think I rounded it up to like four stars on Goodreads because they don't do the split um, stars or anything. So yeah, I'd give it like a, a, a 3.6, 3.7 maybe. It was very entertaining. Um, I really have no complaints about it. So I hope this review was helpful for you. Um, let me know in the comments down below if it helped you to decide whether or not you want to read this story or not, if you're interested in this kind of story. The next story is, which will be going up on Friday, it's going to be very intense. There's going to be some very, very strong trigger warnings. There's a very strong trigger warning at the beginning of that book. So be prepared for that. And it is going to be a spoiler review because of all of this, the trigger warnings. So, so y'all have a wonderful day. I'll see you all at tomorrow's review. You have a wonderful day. Take care.